So we are in limits 1.1b, we're in the second half of the 1.1 lesson, where we've been looking at limits numerical and graphical. And we have analyzed some limits numerically, and we've analyzed some limits graphically, and we've seen some different cases where limits do or do not exist. Based on what we've looked at so far, we have two specific cases for a limit existing or not existing uh, graphically. And what we find is this has nothing to do with the value of our function. f of a does not have to be defined. It does not have to be defined in order for the limit to exist. A limit itself has nothing to do with the function. Later, at the end of this unit, we'll find that the function does play a role in continuity in determining whether a function is continuous, but that is completely separate from whether or not the limit exists. So we can see two cases um, where a function is not defined, which they say here, f of a is not defined. And our first case, we're going to look at where does the limit exist. So what does it look like? What have we seen it look like when our function uh, is not defined, but our limit does exist? Well, if our limit exists, well, this means that um, for our limit to exist, our little graph, for our limit to exist at a, that I must be able to approach it from the left. So I can draw, this can look anything I, anything I want, and here is my limit I'm approaching, we'll just call this value b. I'm approaching a limit of b as I get close to the x value of a from the left. And if I draw this from the right, uh, maybe from the top, and we'll come down, and I'm approaching from the right, and I'm also approaching the y value of b. So those are the function values that my limit's approaching. That makes my limit exist. But how do I indicate that my function does not exist, that f of a is undefined? And remember from our class, um, the function being undefined is represented at, at a particular y value, is represented by my little hollow dot. So in this case, f of a is undefined, but my limit from as x approaches a from the left equals my limit as x approaches a from the right. And remembering my limit existence theorem, that value that they equal is this number b. Go ahead and make that gray. B. And b, for the sake of this graph, is a real number. In other words, it is not infinity. Infinity is not a real number, but pretty much everything else is. So this is an example where my limit exists even though my function is undefined. Well, then what would it look like if my limit does not exist? Well, my function still wants to be undefined, and we can go ahead and draw in that value right here if we like and call that. Uh, that's uh, this is at x equals a. So the hollow dot means my function's not defined for that value. Uh, but what would this look like if my limit doesn't exist? Well, if I have this undefined value, I have a couple different ways uh, that this could look. But the main one is if I approach maybe one value from the left, and then from the right. Oh, I missed it, and I approach some other value and also have an undefined. So at no point in this function at a, at no point at a, is my function defined. So a is undefined here, and my two-sided function does not exist because my left limit does not equal my right limit. Therefore, my limit fails to exist. It does not exist. I can write this, my two-sided limit as x approaches a does not exist. Now, these are two different types of discontinuities. This one on the left, because only this point is missing, this is called a point discontinuity. A point discontinuity. On my right, 
uh, I don't, I'm not missing just one point. The problem is that the limit doesn't exist. My limit isn't existing because if I were to picture a little guy walking along this graph, he'd get to this point and he would have to jump down in order to continue on the function. So this is called a jump discontinuity. What do each of these look like algebraically? This is something we'll touch on more later, but algebraically a point discontinuity appears when we have a value in the denominator that makes the function undefined at that point, but I can cancel it out so that the function exists everywhere else but at that point. A simple example would be if I had x plus 3 times x minus 2 over x plus 4 times x plus 3. In this case, I would have a point discontinuity at x equals negative 3. Because if x were to be negative 3, then negative 3 plus 3 would equal 0. 0 times x plus 4 would be 0, and I'd get 0 in the denominator. Therefore, my function would be undefined at a negative 3. So negative 3 would be a point discontinuity. It would only be a point discontinuity because I could cancel that out. We'll see in the next lesson. And when I cancel that out, now my function becomes defined. But it's a different function. It's a new function now. But this is what it looks like. A point discontinuity is a discontinuity, something in the denominator that makes it 0 that can be canceled out. A jump discontinuity really only happens in a specific sort of situation and that is a piecewise defined function. And these typically look something like this, f of x equals and has a little bracket and we'll have two different functions, one here and one here. And if at a given value these two functions evaluate to different um, numbers, they evaluate to different values, then I'm getting a jump discontinuity. So in other words, I'm following one rule, my blue rule, from the left all the way up until I reach A, and then I switch to the second rule, my greater than A rule, and I follow a different rule. And if at A those two rules yield different values, that's what gives me a jump discontinuity. So we're going to look and evaluate uh, some limits here and analyze this numerical table. This is the kind of thing that you might see on an AP exam and that you'll definitely see on the quiz. Our first, um, our first limit to evaluate is as x approaches negative infinity. So that means I'm going to go as far to the left as possible. I can start wherever and I'm heading off toward x is negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 9, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1000. So I'm reading off to the left here. And as I read off to the left, I want to find out what is the value approaching, not what does it reach. The answer is not 513. But what is it approaching? Where, what is the trend? What is it trending toward and ten, or, or tending toward? And what I find looking at my y values is 3, 9, 33, 513. If I were to take a wild guess at what this next number would be, maybe it would be 1,000 or 10,000. So what I see is that my y value is growing increasingly large. It's growing large at an increasing rate. At first I only increased by 1.5, then I increased by 6, then I increased by 20 something, then I increased by over 400. So I'm growing more and more large. I am approaching positive infinity. For B, I want to find out what happens as I approach negative 3. Now this does not have a positive or negative here, which means that I'm finding my two-sided limit. That means I need to find it both from the left and from the right. So I'm going to start by identifying my negative 3 and then find out what is it trending toward. And as I head toward negative 3 from the left, I see that my values get smaller, 5, 13, 33. And as I head toward negative 3 from the right, I find that my values are getting larger, 
1.3. Without any other information, then it seems that this function is continuous. And in fact, it tells me this is an exponential function, which is a continuous function. This is a continuous function. And what we'll find in the next lesson is that for continuous functions, the value of the function is often the limit. And so we can look here and see that uh, as x approaches negative 3, y approaches trends toward 9 from each side. It wouldn't have to hit 9. It could be, if this were undefined here, but 9.1 just to the left and 8.9 just to the right, then I would still say that this is trending toward 9, even if it never reaches 9. So my two-sided limit as x approaches negative 3 equals 9. Next, let's, let's look at limit C, the limit as x approaches 1. As I approach 1 from the left, I grow smaller. I approach 1.5. As I approach 1 from the right, I get bigger. I also approach 1.5. I approach 1.5. Therefore, I'm going to say my limit is 1.5. And then finally, limit D asks, what about as x approaches positive infinity? What happens as x grows larger and larger? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100, 1,000. And what I find as I look at my y values, 1.5, 1.125, 1.002, 1.003, 1.004, 2, and it looks like this is trending toward 1. It never has to hit 1. It just needs to approach 1. It's trending toward 1. So let's review this bottom table on the same page. We have some more limits. And we can get pretty quick at this because we're just looking for the trend. What is this heading toward? And these values are chosen to be very, very close to whichever value we're heading toward. And that'll give us a pretty good idea. So for limit A, as x approaches negative infinity, we're going to trend this direction on x and look at my y's. This is approaching, looks like it's getting very close to 1. Doesn't have to hit 1, just needs to get close. B asks, what value um, do I approach as I get close to x equals negative 1 from the left? So here's negative 1. I head toward it from the left. And looking just to the side, I went from 1 to 2,001. 2,001 is a very big positive number. And the function is undefined, which tends to happen when we have an asymptote, which happens when my values are approaching infinity. All of this tells me that as I approach negative 1, my y values are going sky high. I am approaching positive infinity. I can never actually reach infinity, but I can approach it. For C, I'm similarly approaching negative 1, but now I'm approaching it from the right. So here's my negative 1. And as I approach from the right, I find I go from negative 1 to negative 1,999, which is, again, a very big number, but a very negative big number. This tells me that, again, I'm looking at undefined. I probably have an asymptote. My function is taking a nosedive, my y value is heading south, I am approaching negative infinity. Let's look at D. This now asks for the two-sided limit as x approaches 2. So we can look at 2 and look at it from the left and from the right. Even though 2 is undefined, I can still see that I am trending toward a value. From the left, I went negative 1 and then grew a little bit to 0.3333. And from the right, I had uh, almost 1 and then 0.3334. And what I'm going to see, I can kind of guess this is going to be maybe 0.3333 or maybe 0.3334. And if I think about it and remember that 0.3 repeating, is the equivalent of one-third. That would be about between 0.333 and 0.334. And in fact, that's what this limit is, is one-third. E asks me to identify as x approaches positive infinity. I'm going to read off the chart toward positive infinity. 
looking at my rightmost value, I can tell that as I get my x value very large, as I get x closer to infinity, my y value is getting very, very close to the number 1. It's approximately 1, and so that is the value that I'm trending toward. F is our last one, and we don't actually need to look back at the table, because F asks me for the two-sided limit as x approaches negative 1. And we, when we looked at our limit existence theorem, we saw that a limit exists if, if its left limit exists and equals its right limit, and if those limits equal each other, oh, but they don't. I have positive infinity and negative infinity. They do not equal each other, therefore this limit does not exist. Even if these had been positive infinity, and positive infinity, they may have equaled each other, but infinity is not a real number. As soon as I'm dealing with two-sided limits and infinity, my limit cannot exist. It does not exist. So that was our practice with numerical limits. Now we can see some extra practice with graphical limits, and I love these. They're really quick and easy as long as we um, follow our function and read our graph well and remember that for my limits I do not care about where my function exists. This does not matter. This does not matter. What matters is what value am I approaching. So we're going to start with a and my page looks a little bit different than yours. I pulled the functions up so I could see them side by side with the graph. They show up better in the recording that way. But for a, I have the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. So first thing I want to do is identify where is x equals negative 3. And that is right down here. And in fact, I find that this asymptote is at x equals negative 3. Whenever I'm dealing with an asymptote, I should be thinking infinity. Anytime I have an asymptote, infinity is involved. So since I'm not taking the limit as x approaches infinity, and I need infinity in there somewhere else, I have the idea already in my mind I'm looking probably for an infin infinite limit, a limit to infinity. So as x approaches negative 3, which way? From the left. I start on the left, and I head toward negative 3, and I find that I'm heading up. And if I were to continue this, it would go up closer and closer and closer until it seemed to be practically a straight line but it would never actually touch the asymptote. It would just grow infinitely close. So it would grow very, very close to negative 3. Even though it would never touch it, um, it would be approaching negative 3, and the y value would be going up toward positive infinity. For b, the limit as x approaches negative 5, I identify where is my x equals negative 5. That's down here. And this is a two-sided limit. It didn't ask for the left or the right, so I need to be able to converge towards something from both sides. And I start with my function from the left, and I see that as I approach negative 5, it looks like I approach a y value of 4. So from the left, I approach 4, and I can also see from the right, I approach 4. Therefore, huh, my two-sided limit is 4. For C, I am approaching negative 1. One more color here. I find where is my x equals negative 1. Here's negative 1. And this is a two-sided limit because there's no negative or positive in the corner. So it's two-sided. I need to converge on negative 1 from the left and from the right. I approach from the left, and it looks like I'm approaching a y value of negative 1. As I approach from the right, I approach a y value of negative 1. So it looks like my limit is negative 1. But you might say, I have this solid dot here. Isn't that a problem? Not really. It just means that the function's defined there, and I don't care. I do not care whether the function is defined or not. For b, as we approach negative 5, the function was not defined. That's OK. That's cool with me. The function can live its own life undefined. In C, as x approaches negative 1, my function is defined. That is its choice. I'm cool with that. I don't care. All I care about is what am I approaching for my limit, 
therefore my limit is approaching negative 1. Okay, before we move on, uh, just go ahead and note there are two C's here. This is our first C and this is our second C. So why don't you, in the moment, pause the video and try C, D, and E, second C, D and E, on your own. Write it in with pencil if you like, and then when you finish, go ahead and resume the video and we'll see how you did. Okay, so C asks us to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 3. This is a two-sided limit. Here is my negative 3 right here. From the left, I approach positive infinity. From the right, I approach negative infinity. There are two reasons why this limit does not exist. One is because the left limit does not equal the right limit. Infinity does not equal negative infinity. The second reason is because infinity is not a real number. It is not a real boy. Okay, so uh, infinity makes this limit also not exist. Looking at D as x approaches 2 from the left. So we want to approach positive 2 from the left and as I approach, I find that I'm heading toward, I'm pointing toward, a y value of about 1. Now I have then this jump from 1 all the way up to 6, but that's okay. This is a left-sided limit. I don't care about what happens on the right. I just care about what I'm heading toward on the left. And this solid dot means that the function is defined there, but the limit would still be 1 whether it was a solid dot or a hollow dot because the limit is not dependent on the function. For e, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, same x value, but this time I'm approaching it from the right. And as I approach from the right, I find I'm heading toward a y value of 6. Again, that this is undefined, the function is undefined. Don't care. This one was defined. Don't care about that. What value was I heading toward? I was heading toward 6. Okay, go ahead and pause the video again and try F, G, and H. F, G, and H. When you're finished, hit resume and you can see how you did. All right, so F is the limit as x approaches 2. I could look at this graphically and tell or I can look at my left limit numerically and my right limit. Either way, I can see that as I approach 2, I get a different limit from the left as I get from the right. We saw earlier that when I have this jump discontinuity, where I have to jump really high, here's the basketball hoop. When I have to jump from one spot to another, my limit does not exist. And I can also see that by my limit existence theorem that my left limit here does not equal my right limit. Therefore, f does not exist. For g, it's asking me for the limit as x approaches negative infinity, which means uh, given x axis is left and right, negative infinity is going off to the left. So I'm going to read this function off to the left. And I don't have to start way over here and trace all the way and jump. I could, and then, and, you know, go all the way around the world, around the globe, come back down. I can just start anywhere in this area and head off the left of the graph. And what I see is this is flattening out and it's trending toward a value. And the value that it's trending toward is, uh, a good hint, is this asymptote here, which is going through y equals 2. So my limit as x approaches negative infinity is 2. That's, in fact, what this asymptote represents. Remember, asymptote means I'm dealing with infinity. Um, in this case, because I was approaching negative infinity, I read the value of that asymptote, and that gave me 2. Back when we were finding the limit as x approached negative 3, I was approaching negative 3, and I found I was running toward an asymptote, which meant I needed an infinity, and this was positive infinity here. In this case, I'm approaching negative infinity, and my asymptote's at 2. My limit is 2. 
And finally, for h, the limit as x approaches positive infinity. This one's a little bit tricky. We haven't seen one like this before. I follow my graph, and I'm heading off this way. And I'm not heading toward an asymptote. I'm just going way out into the wild blue yonder. But what trend am I seeing? What happens to my y values? Here my y value is 4. Here my y value is 6, 8, 10, maybe about 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 100, 1,000, 5,000, a million. It's just going forever. The sky is the limit. This is approaching positive infinity. We don't see these especially often, but they are a mathematical possibility that my function is just going out into the wild blue yonder. It is going up toward infinity. All right, we're in the home stretch. This is our next set of graphs, our next graph and set of limits. And again, I've moved my limits up side by side so that you can see them better. Go ahead and try A, B, and C. Pause, try A, B, and C. Come back, and we'll see how you did. All right, let's look at A. We're approaching negative 3 from the left. As I approach negative 3 from the left, the y value I'm heading toward is 0. Don't care that it's undefined, it's heading toward 0. For B, this is a two-sided limit as x approaches negative 6. I don't have a plus or a minus, so this is two-sided. As I look at negative 6 down here, and I say, what value am I approaching from each side? Well, from the left, it looks like I'm approaching negative 4. And from the right, I'm approaching that same value. There isn't a solid or a hollow dot here, but any place that my function exists is the equivalent of a solid dot. I don't care, though, because I don't care about the function when I'm finding the limit. Since my left limit equals negative 4, and my right limit equals negative 4, and negative 4 is a real number, this limit does exist, and it is negative 4. C asks for the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. Here's negative 1. I approach it from the right. The y value I'm trending toward is 2. Go ahead and try D, E, and F. Pause the video, and when you're finished, come back, and we'll move on. Okay, so D asks, as x approaches negative 3 from the right, here's negative 3. I approach from the right. I'm approaching a y value of 0. So my limit is 0. E asks for the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. Here's 4. From the left, not only is have, have an infinity, but the function doesn't even exist here. There's nothing actually approaching negative 4. This just stops. It doesn't approach it. So this limit does not exist. It is a one-sided limit. It does not exist at all because there's nothing there. The function's undefined on its way. F is similar. It asks for 4 from the right. But as we approach 4 from the right, I find I'm going down, down, down. I'm approaching this asymptote. I'm actually still heading toward it, which means asymptote, infinity, infinity, asymptote. So as I approach this, approach this asymptote, I am approaching negative infinity as my y value. I'm heading down. Go ahead and pause and try G, H, and I on your own. And when you're finished, come back and let's check your answers. All right, the limit as x approaches 4. I could look at this graphically and see as x approaches 4, I have an asymptote there, which means I'm dealing with infinities, so my two-sided limit can't exist because infinity is not a real number. I also know that this limit does not exist because my left limit does not exist. If my, my left limit or my right limit do not exist, then my two-sided limit cannot exist. So either way, g does not exist 
um, either because I'm dealing with infinity, which is not a real number, or because my left limit does not exist, and if it doesn't exist, it can't equal my right limit. So I have multiple problems with g there. Looking at h now, we're evaluating the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right. Here's negative 4. I approach it from the right, and I approach a y value of what looks like about negative 2.5, and we're going to ballpark it there. I'm just approaching from the right. Then looking at i, it asks for the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left. Here's negative 4 still. I'm approaching from the left, and I'm approaching a y value of about negative 6. This doesn't ask for it, but would my limit as x approaches negative 4, what would that be or would it exist? Think about that for a moment. My limit as x approaches negative 4 cannot exist because my left limit does not equal my right limit. Both of them are real numbers, but they don't equal each other. And I see in this example that they create a jump discontinuity. And that is the end of our lesson. I will see you guys tomorrow.